Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. It's been a while since I released the last Watch and Learn. Generally, this time of year, I just don't have a lot of time in general to film, and when I do film, it's for promotional stuff, things coming into the store, new items, uh, things going to be on sale. Obviously, this is the busiest time of year, but I didn't want to neglect Watch and Learn 100%, so today I'm going to do a quick video. Uh, it's not so much on watches per se, but it's on an item that I do sell in the store. I'm going to discuss discuss briefly how to use vernier calipers uh, and I'll show you what vernier calipers are if you don't know uh, I think nowadays with a lot of people verniers have been supplanted by digitals and dial calipers uh, but it's important in my opinion to know how verniers work where they you know you know they 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 date back you know many many years ago before digitals came out uh, so I like to tell people, you know, you should, should know how to use some of the old technology. I think it's really cool. Uh, so um, let's head over and check out some vernier calipers. So I want to go over, discuss vernier calipers. I sell two kinds, and eh, two kinds, two brands of vernier calipers. I sell Marathon branded calipers. These are them. Uh, they're plastic. I love plastic. Oh, there, there, there it says Marathon. I, oh, let me back up. I'm sorry. I, sell, I was saying I sell two. And I sell another white, uh, a white pair that's, uh, again, inexpensive, I, I dare I say cheap plastic calipers. I sell both just because sometimes people want something. This is a little bit of a nicer caliper than the white one, but the white one is the one personally that I use. Uh, but for my demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the uh, gray one because it provides the gray color price, a little more contrast for the camera. So vernier calipers are very useful, not just for watches, you can use them, dare I say, or I hate to sound like a commercial, but around the house. You really can. You have to measure anything under about six inches. See, there's six. It goes up to, you know, close to seven. Um, but your maximum is going to be six and change inches that you're going to measure. But they are very accurate, even though they're plastic. Now, back to what I was saying before. I prefer plastic for watches because no matter what you do, you're never going to scratch the case. Um, you know, real good calipers, you know, Japanese calipers, German calipers, uh, they're hardened steel jaws. If you even just barely, they're, they're, and they're sharpened to razor blades if they're new. If you barely touch the case of the watch, you're going to nick it. So people do put, you know, cloth tape and stuff around the jaws, and then obviously that provides protection. Uh, so that's fine. Uh, but, you know, why not just use a pair of plastic calipers? Of course, the downfall here is that while they can be used for decent precision, uh, down to 0.05 millimeters, you can see, uh, they are plastic. So if you want to measure something and, you know, the harder you push, you can kind of change the dimension with like where, as with steel calipers, you cannot. Anyway, so I said vernier, and in case you don't know, so this is now the watch line is going to start. So as it slides, there is a scale down here that goes from zero to zero, zero to nine, then it goes back down to zero. And as, this is for the millimeter scale, and this is for the uh, standard or inches scale. These are the vernier scales. They're a little bit different than the scales that are on the caliper themselves. And you use these markings to measure increments finer than what is on the main scale. Sounds like a lot. It really isn't. But this is the way calipers uh, were originally. Uh, then I guess dials came out, and then eventually, obviously, digitals came out, which... Kind of like the quartz revolution wristwatches, you don't need to do much to be able to read a digital watch. Same thing with a digital caliper. Uh, but I just want to discuss how to use these and how to measure things. Uh, so the first thing that people, I guess, maybe don't fully understand is that this caliper can measure things, let's see, one, two, three, four different methods. Uh, so let's go over that and then we'll discuss how to read them. So obviously most people go and stick stuff in between the jaws and they get a, uh, a reading. So that's one way to measure. You put it between the, if it's small, you put it between the thin part of the jaws, and if it's large like this, you put it, we're not looking for, you know, extreme accuracy, you put it between the thick part of the jaws. We'll read them in a minute. I just want to show you right now how to use them. So that's one way. This is called an exterior measurement. Uh, I'm not an inspector. I know there might be better terms for it, but this is what I call them. Another thing you can do is interior measurements. With this set of jaws here, you put it between the lugs and you pull. And you can read off, I think I'm doing, I'm looking at the camera, sorry. Uh, you can read off the distance between the lugs using an interior measurer. So interior measurement, exterior measurement. Now there's two more, and they're, one of them's kind of hidden. And I know a lot of people, you know, I think kind of gloss over them. If you flip the caliper over, the sliding jaw is stepped up a little bit. 
So you can use the caliper to measure the distance between this surface that my finger is touching and this surface that the pencil is touching. So between here and here as this slides. Now in wristwatches, probably not the most useful measurement. You probably don't need it all that much. Uh, but where would this come in handy? Well, I'll show you exactly. You have a, something you need to measure and you cannot pick it up. You can slide. Let's see if I can do this on the camera. You can slide this jaw here against the, the bottom of the table. And then this jaw slides. And then this part bottoms on here. And then you can pick up the caliper. We don't need to lock it because it's plastic. And then we can read, you know, five centimeters uh, is the thickness of the block or the depth. And there's one more, which is really used, I would say, for, for screw holes or for depths of things that you can't get the caliper into. There is a metal rod that slides out the bottom. And again, uh, if I had something with a screw hole in it, never mind, I found something. <laughs> so let's say I wanted to measure, obviously there's different ways to measure things. We'll say I needed to measure the depth of th this interior portion. You can put the caliper on top. Well, let me turn it around so you can see the rod, right? And then you push it down. The rod goes down, hits the table, and then I can read again the measurement off the caliper. It's, I don't know three and a quarter centimeters or something. I'm really not reading it. Uh, so now let's go over how you actually read the caliper or the really important part, the vernier scale. So you saw me before I measured the diameter of the watch. So let's do that. So I measure the diameter and I read, let me get a, a pointy stick. So I'm going to be using the millimeter scale. So I read this line here is my initial measurement. So it's 10 millimeters, 11, 12, this happens to be 13 millimeters on the nose because the zero, or just about on the nose, because the zero lines up almost perfectly. Uh, for most measurements, you can just interpolate. Like let's say I measured the case and it came out to be like th that. You could say, okay, it's like 13 and a half millimeters. Um, and again, for what we're doing here, measuring lugs and thicknesses and diameters, that's fine. I don't need any more accuracy than that, but I can, and that's where the vernier scale comes into play. So let's let's throw that aside. Uh, by the way, that doesn't work, or it might. I don't know. Uh, so I, I take that out, and let's just say I made I made up this fake measurement, and it looks like it's around 13 and a half. So now, how do I figure out what this measurement actually is? And that's where the vernier scale comes in handy. Uh, it's so cool, and it's so easy. What you do is you start looking at the hash marks down the line and you wait to see when a hash mark lines up exactly with the mark above it. Like these three. This one's a little bit to the left. This one appears to be dead on. This one's a little bit to the right. So it's this one. That's a five. So it's 13.50 millimeters. And I know it's millimeters and I know the resolution because it's it's written over here. This will give me 0, 0.5 millimeter accuracy. It's not 1.55, uh, you know, this one a little bit different, this one a little bit different, this one appears to line up on the nose. So let's do, you know, I was tooling around before and I think, was it the lugs? I don't know if it was this or my Seiko I had sitting here. Give me one second. Yeah, it was my Seiko. Guys, remember this one? This was the, one of the ones I did the water test on when the bubbles came out. It's been sitting here. <laughs> it looks pretty cool, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, it doesn't work. Uh, it's got all sorts of, obviously, <laughs> deposits on it now. Um, but we can use it for lug measurements, right? So I'm going to stick it in there, and I'm going to take away the calipers and read. And it looks like it's 20... Actually, if you look, it's actually under 22, isn't it? If I read where the zero is, it looks like it's just shy of 22. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to assume it's going to be like 21.9 or something. I'm going to come way down the line here, and look at that. There's 21.9 lines up perfectly. 21.85 actually I think lines up even better. So the lug width on this Seiko is 21.85 millimeters. It's 0.15 millimeters. It's... It's nothing. It's such a small amount that, you know, obviously for intents and purposes, we call it 22, but it really is 0.15 millimeters shy of 22 millimeters. And all the Seikos are, you know, just are different, you know, and that's tolerances of manufacturing, tolerances of, of everything. And with the same process, you know, we can use this scale, 
So we got one scale, two scale, three scale, and four scale. You read them all the same exact way, and if I wanted to take the inch measurement, I would do the same thing, but guys, uh, the, I like the metric system. In engineering school, we pretty much used solely the metric system. Uh, to start doing it with the quarters and the 128ths and stuff is... <laughs> It's just not intuitive. But uh, anyway, so this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how to use old school vernier calipers. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.